So as Mary said, uh, I'm a clinical psychologist. I work in the Oxfordshire CAMS NDC party and I'm presenting uh, Eloise's uh, current project. So Eloise is uh, an academic. Um, she's also a clinician. She's currently completing her uh, clinical psychology training and just an all round wonderful person. Uh, Eloise has also uh, said she's happy for me to share with you that she is herself autistic, uh, which of course informs how she's gone about this project. OK, so um, I, I haven't got lots of slides for you because uh, I don't want to bombard you with information, but um, essentially what I'm going to do is going to talk you through the rationale for the project, just briefly speak to the theory, then say about the aims, the design, and I'll tell you a little bit about the interview schedule that we're using, and, and I'll update you on where we are now uh, and what we're going to do next. Um, oh, sorry, just need to move. I know that's the thing. There we go. So. The, the, the rationale for this is that we know that having a positive uh, autistic identity protects uh, autistic young people from developing mental health problems. It's as simple as that. We know that if you feel more positive about yourself and better about yourself, then you're protected um, from 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 mental health difficulties. Um, and we we need to know what supports the development of, of a positive autistic identity and in particular how we as clinicians can play a role in shaping this. So um, Fred, there's, there's rather wordy what I put up on the on the screen here about the theory. So I just want to sort of summarise what this says, really. So essentially what this, uh, this theory tells us is that our identities are formed through interactions with other people, and that might include health professionals, um, and that we really need to recognise and emphasise strengths as well as recognise the impact of any difficulties um, that people who uh, have a disability or who are neuro neurodiverse have and how they influence how they think about themselves and uh, and how they manage and cope in the, in the world. So there are two main aims for the project. Um, the first is to understand what factors clinicians uh, have experienced as influential and important in supporting positive identity formation in the young people that they provide autism diagnoses to. And the second is to identify and understand the barriers within current service provision to, to enabling that. So um, what Eloise has done is she's designed some semi-structured interviews, which she completes, uh, has completed, sorry, with uh, clinicians either face-to-face -face or via Teams. Um, and all the clinicians are from the team that I work in, which, as I've said, is the Oxfordshire CAMS NDC team. And for those of you who are kind of unfamiliar with a semi-structured interview, um, the process, there's a degree of structure, but actually the process allows some flexibility within that so that you can follow what people are saying. You don't, you're not constrained by sticking to rigid um, questions. And each time you do one of those interviews, you learn more. So it's an iterative process and that might inform how you, uh, how you uh, conduct the next interview. You can do it as a group or as individuals. In, in our case, we're doing it uh, with individuals. Um, as, as, as I've said, it's prepared in advance, but it's iterative, so there may be things added into the, the interview structure. Um, and, and crucially, it's about selecting a group of people who you think can offer something kind of important um, to the question that you're considering. Now, obviously, you know, health professionals are just one group of people who might inform um, how we can develop the, um, the development of a, a positive autistic identity. Um, it's crucially, young people themselves are the most important and their families and teachers and other people from their network. But um, Eloise was really keen having worked in our team and, and seen that we're, we're keen to do this to understand how we go about doing it. Um, so of course this provides insights into participant perspectives um, and, and it provides a really rich qualitative um, account of, of what people are doing to try and um, to, to bring about uh, the development of a positive autistic identity. Um, so the approach that Eloise is going to be using to uh, to, to analyse data is called IPA, uh, which is just a particular qualitative methodology, um, which is, is very important because it's it, it relies on us reflecting on our own perspective as we analyse the data as well. So it takes into account our own perspective and potential biases. Um, so the first bit of the uh, interview involves kind of defining what we mean by positive autistic identity. Um, I'm not going to go through kind of these uh, the 
uh, information here you'll hopefully have the slides but we just want to make really clear that we do define what we mean by that kind of early on in the process that's a really important part of this interview um then uh, we get into the kind of the, the meat of the interview, which is really exploring kind of what uh, what people are doing to try and um, help the development of a positive autistic identity and also the barriers. So, so here are some of the questions that, that we, we're using. So the first, thinking about a specific young person who you've worked with, can you provide examples of what you noticed about your impact on their developing identity? Can you now tell me about a time where it has been a challenge for you professionally when working with a young person specifically related to their sense of autistic identity? In what ways do the team approach neurodiversity and how do you feel the team's approach impacts upon developing identity in young people? And what barriers do you feel there may have been to you as a clinician supporting young people's positive identity development? And then there's some follow ups with that. Are there specific barriers specific to the NDC service and are there barriers specific to systemic facts around the child? For example, their family context or education. So Eloise has just finished um, the last of her semi-structured interviews. I think she's done eight or ten. I can't remember exactly how. So the process now it involves the analysis. Um, so she will um, she will use the IPA process uh, to make sense of the information and draw out themes. Um, and a second person will play a role in that as well. But Eloise will be the principal person doing that obviously be feeding back to the service and Bob and we're hoping to get this um, published and to look at this information alongside what we already know about how we might develop support the development of uh, a positive identity in young people and specifically autistic young people there we go that's it that's it I hope that was within time um, Mary 